The English Toy Spaniel is a delightful, affectionate toy dog with a decidedly aristocratic heritage. Companion to royalty for 300 years, the English Toy Spaniel is today equally at home in the country cottage or the city apartment. Toy Spaniels have existed for hundreds of years on the continent and in England as pet dogs of the aristocracy. In the 1500s, they were known as the Spaniel Gentile, or Comforter. A hundred years later, the Stuart King so loved these little dogs that King Charles became the very name of the breed in England. In the mid-1800s, interbreeding with Oriental Toy Spaniels probably occurred. The English Toy Spaniel was recognized and first admitted to the AKC Stud Book in 1886 and enjoyed great popularity in the States at the turn of the century. Today, there are two separate English toy varieties, one of solid and one of broken colors. The broken colors are the Blenheim, which is red and white, and the Prince Charles, which is black and white with tan points. The solid colors are the King Charles, which is black with tan points, and the Ruby, which is a rich red. You'll be seeing many English toy spaniels during this presentation. Some are outstanding examples of the breed. Others are less so. But all will help your understanding of the English toy spaniel. In general appearance, the English toy spaniel is a compact, cobby, and basically square toy dog. He is a flat-faced dog with a domed head, has a silky, flowing coat, and a merry, affectionate demeanor. All elements should combine to create a dog of distinction and character, with the breed's most important characteristic exemplified by its unique head. Adult animals ideally weigh 8 to 14 pounds. General symmetry and substance are more important than actual weight. But all things being equal, the smaller dog is to be preferred. This dog and bitch are good breed examples. Remember that the English Toy Spaniel is compact, essentially square, and built on cobby lines. He should be sturdy of frame and solidly constructed. The unique head is one of the most important characteristics to be evaluated in this breed. It is large in comparison to the overall size of the dog. It has a plush, chubby look, although a degree of refinement keeps it from appearing coarse. The skull is high, well-domed, and curves as far out over the eyes as possible, forming a well-rounded forehead and top skull. The muzzle is very short. The nose, ideally tipped back, forms a deep, well-defined stop. The stop should be deep enough to enable just the tip of a little finger to fit into its hollow. The short muzzle is well cushioned under the eyes, forming a perfect wide, soft curve, with lips just touching to give a finished appearance. From the front, the jaw is square, broad, and deep. The lips meet evenly. The nose is large, with large, wide-open nostrils, and is jet black in all coat colors. This poor head lacks the characteristic domed skull, which is a necessary aspect of the toy spaniel's head. And here, the jaw is weak without broad, wide cushions. The muzzle is narrow and pinched. This dog's head is correct, with a high domed skull, very short muzzle, and well-defined stop. Note again the cushioning under the eyes, and the broad, deep turned up jaw. The bite is slightly undershot, Teeth should not show when the mouth is closed. In checking the bite, 
it is not necessary to pry open the jaws. Running the finger along the jawline or gently lifting the upper lip should be sufficient to determine the correct bite. An overshot bite, wry mouth, or tongue showing while the mouth is closed are all faults that should be penalized. Note, too, that a hanging tongue is extremely objectionable. Eyes are large, round, lustrous, and very dark brown or black. They are set wide apart, squarely on line with the nose, with little or no white showing. The eyes never appear bulging or goggled. The expression must be soft, appealing, and intelligent, and is enhanced by black eye rims. The amount of white showing in these eyes is excessive. These eyes are correct, large, and very dark in color. Ears are very long and set low, close to the head, and covered with heavy feathering. This is a lovely head overall. You can see how all the elements combine to create the typical soft, appealing expression, indicating an intelligent nature. Now let's discuss the English toy spaniel's neck and body. The neck is moderate in length and should be nicely arched. It blends into well laid back shoulders. The forelegs are heavy boned and strong and drop straight from the elbow. The brisket is deep. This dog is straight in shoulder, which causes restricted front movement. The neck is short due to the upright shoulder. This dog is correctly angulated in front. The strong, heavy boned forelegs drop in a straight line from the elbows. Here the front is faulty, the elbows are out, and the front legs are bowed. The front feet are neat and compact. The pasterns are strong. Fused toes are often seen in this breed and are acceptable. The toy spaniel's body is short, compact, basically square and deep. It's built on cobby lines with a broad back and level top line. It is sturdy in frame and well ribbed up. This dog is too long in body and soft in top line, which is not correct. Neither is this roach top line. This dog's body is correct, with a level top line, broad back, and short, square, deep body. The tail is set on level with the back and is carried at or just slightly above the top line. The toy spaniel's tail is docked at two to four inches in length. Many toy spaniels are born with a shorter or screw tail both of which are also acceptable. The feather on the tail is silky and from three to four inches in length, creating a square-shaped flag. The toy spaniel's happy tail and its proud carriage is an index of the breed's attitude and character. The English toy spaniel's hindquarters are characterized by well-muscled rear legs and nicely angulated stifles. The rear angulation and heavy bone should balance that of the front. This dog appears too straight in the rear. While this is over-angulated, both are incorrect. This dog's hindquarters are correctly angulated, balancing that of the forequarters. From the rear, the hocks should be parallel, turning neither in nor out. Like the front feet, the rear feet are neat and compact. 
Now let's discuss the English toy spaniel's coat. The coat is profuse, with heavy fringing on the ears, body, and on the chest. Flowing feathering on the back of the front and rear legs, and feathering on the feet. This glossy coat is straight, or only slightly wavy, with a silky texture. Over trimming of the body, feet, or tail fringes should be penalized. The English toy spaniel has four color variations and is shown in two varieties. The broken colors are the Blenheim, which is red and white, and the Prince Charles, which is black and white with tan points. The solids are the King Charles, which is black and tan, and the Ruby, which is a rich red. Let's discuss each of these coat colorations individually. The Blenheim consists of a pearly white ground with deep red or chestnut markings, which are evenly distributed over the body in large patches. The ears and cheeks are red, with a blaze of white extending from the nose up the forehead, ideally ending between the ears in a crescent-like curve. The classic Blenheim spot, if present, appears on the top and center of the skull. The red markings preferably surround both eyes. The Prince Charles's coat coloration has a pearly white background with evenly distributed black patches on the body. The ears are black with tan in the linings. It is preferable that there be black markings around both eyes. There are typical tan points on the cheeks, over the eyes, in the lining of the ears and under the tail. The King Charles is a rich, glossy black with distinctive tan points. These markings appear on the cheeks, the lining of the ears, over the eyes, on the legs and underneath the tail. Sometimes a small white chest patch about the size of a quarter or just a few white hairs appear on the King Charles and should not be penalized. Any other white markings elsewhere on the body are an extremely serious fault and should be penalized. The ruby is a self-colored rich mahogany red. As with the King Charles, a small white patch or a few white hairs on the chest are not to be penalized. But white elsewhere on the body is an extremely serious fault and should be penalized. Let's review the four colorations. The Blenheim, the Prince Charles, the King Charles, and the Ruby. The English toy spaniel's gait is free and lively. There should be good reach in the front and a sound driving rear action. Coming toward you, the front legs should be carried straight forward. And going away, the rear legs follow in a straight line behind the forelegs. The front shown here is too wide and it is paddling. Here the front is elbowing out. This hind quarter is too narrow and lacks drive. Here again is correct movement, free, easy, and denoting stable character and proper construction. Note the good length of stride. Finally, a word about temperament. The English Toy Spaniel is a devoted, affectionate dog who is happiest in familiar surroundings and with those he loves. Personable, loving, and individualistic, the English Toy Spaniel is a special challenge and beloved companion.